What's up guys? This is Pro Warriors. The first native PS3 emulator for Android, APS3E, is back with its latest update, version 10. It's also making a bold statement, claiming it's still alive after being kicked off GitHub and it's ready to compete head-to-head -head with RPCSX UI Android. Now the big question is, does this update live up to the hype? Or is it too late since RPCSX has already taken a massive lead and keeps getting better? You have to watch this full video because APS3E might just surprise you with new features and major improvements. Let's get started. Let's take a look at the new features and improvements in the latest APS3E update. One of the major additions is the new settings UI. In the previous update, users couldn't edit or customize settings directly within the app and had to manually modify config files, which was a complicated and confusing process. Now users can easily access and adjust emulator settings directly from the app interface, making the experience much more user-friendly with plenty of options to explore. Another major improvement is the 3D texture correction, which fixes several graphical issues and significantly improves rendering quality, resulting in better visual output in many games. Additionally, there have been several internal updates aimed at enhancing overall emulator stability and performance. Previously, the emulator would often freeze or hang during exit, but this issue has now been resolved, making it easier to navigate and apply performance tweaks. The settings interface has also been redesigned with a cleaner layout. Overall, this update feels quite similar to RPCS3 Android Alpha 7 and the settings menu appears to be inspired by the official RPCS3 Android port, which will feel familiar to users who have tried RPCS3. Now let's get to the main point, where can you actually get the app? APS3E has been removed several times from GitHub, and it seems unlikely that it will return there. While the emulator does have a website, it's a bit unclear and unreliable, so I won't be sharing it here. Instead, your best option is to join their official WeChat group, as the developer is most likely based in China and shares regular updates through that platform. Download the APK file and install it. You might see a Google Play Protect warning because it's built with an older Android version, but it's safe to install. This emulator is lightweight and has a simple UI. The game list is currently empty since I'm trying it for the first time, but don't worry, it's not a fake app. By tapping the three dots, you'll find several options, including install firmware and install ISO or PKG. This emulator supports both game formats, along with newly added features like key mapper and virtual pad editor, and settings option that takes this app to the next level. Let's install the firmware, which is an essential component for running PS3 games. Fortunately, the PlayStation 3 firmware is available on PlayStation's official website, so you can easily download it. Make sure your internet connection is stable to avoid any interruptions during the process. Once downloaded, click on Install Firmware and navigate to the folder where the file is stored, most likely in the Downloads folder. The installation will start immediately and be completed within seconds. Now let's add some games. Simply click on Install ISO or PKG and navigate to the folder where your games are stored. Disclaimer, the emulator itself is legal, but using illegal ROMs is forbidden. I do not support or provide access to pirated games, so please use legal copies for your safety. I have a few games that I own, and you can even play high-end titles, so there's no need to worry about performance. Best Settings Guide for Maximum Performance Head over to the Core Settings. There are many new options here. You can now adjust the core PPU decoder and thread settings. Before making changes, please check your phone's thread count in the system info. Some of the other options can also help improve game performance, but I won't cover those today, I'll make a separate video for that. In the VFS settings, you can adjust the disk cache, this determines how much RAM will actually be used. Now the most anticipated feature is the video settings. For best performance, select the lowest video resolution and set the aspect ratio to 16 to 9. Keep the frame rate level on auto. Unfortunately, the API settings option is currently missing. Also, make sure to enable the stretch to display option. Set the resolution scale to 100%, and you can increase it later depending on your device's performance. Still, a few features are missing like there's no option yet for custom GPU driver installation or in-game settings. Control customization also needs more development. You can also edit key mapping, but it looks a bit weird, and I need some time to understand it. This emulator comes with a built-in touchscreen controller, making it easy to play without an external gamepad. I was only able to play small games or demo versions, while larger 3A titles failed to load. This emulator still requires a lot of development, and the developers need to address these issues. First, 
the emulator needs to return to GitHub after fixing all the issues. Then, it requires significant regular updates to become stable and capable of running high-end titles. Take care.